Hi, I'm Maria Joella Cruz, and I'll be reporting Cellular Networks. Cellular networks carry voice, text, and digital data through the transmitting and receiving of radio frequency, or RF signals. At its heart, a mobile phone is a two-way radio, and it sends and receives signals as it moves through a network of transmitters and receivers. Think of all the cell towers you see as you travel to and from work or school each day. These towers are part of the cellular network infrastructure. Cellular carriers or providers own and operate these towers and the networks they form. Each cellular network is divided into thousands of overlapping geographic areas called cells. You can think of it as a mesh of hexagonal cells like a honeycomb. Each cell has its own base station at the center and the cells overlap at the edges to ensure that users always remain within range of a base station. This layout makes it possible to maintain a call as you travel out of one cell into another. The base station at the center of each cell acts as a network hub only for that cell, not for the entire network. Radio signals transmitted by a phone are received by the base station, where they are then retransmitted from the base station to another mobile phone. The base stations are connected to one another and calls are automatically transferred from one base station to another as callers move between cells. Each base station is also connected to the landline telephone network and can relay mobile calls to landline phones. Cellular networks are also connected to the internet at various points where different large networks exchange traffic, enabling you to access the internet on your smartphone through your cellular provider. Cellular generations, all about the Gs. 3G, third generation. These transfer data at up to 2 Mbps, almost as fast as DSL, which makes it practical to use a mobile phone to surf the internet and use web-based applications. 3G is considered the minimum requirement for using a smartphone today. 4G, fourth generation. This standard promises speeds in excess of 1 Gbps when you are stationary and 100 Mbps when you are highly mobile, such as when you are using your phone while traveling in a car. LTE or 4G LTE, fourth generation. LTE stands for long-term evolution. LTE devices were originally marketed as 4G technology. They are, however, significantly faster than 3G LTE. It's the fastest cellular technology currently available. And the newest one is 5G, 5th generation wireless technology. It can provide higher speed, lower latency, and greater capacity than 4G LTE networks. 5G wireless technology is meant to deliver higher multi-GBPS peak data speeds, ultra-low latency, more reliability, massive network capacity, increased availability, and a more uniform user experience to more users. I personally um, experienced using the 5G network in some of the places here. And when I checked the speed test, it went up uh, 1,500 Mbps up to 2,000 Mbps. So it's really, really fast um, connection. A cellular carrier is a cell phone company that provides cellular service to mobile phone users. In the USA, the four biggest cell carriers are AT&T, Sprint, T-Mobile, and Verizon. There are, of course, numerous others in the States and worldwide there are over 30 large carriers who each service hundreds of thousands of subscribers. In the Philippines, we have Globe, Smart, Sun Cellular, Touch Mobile, and Talk and Text. A carrier uses either the Global System for Communication, GSM, Radio System, or the Code Division Multiple Access, or CDMA, Radio System for its cellular network. This system differs in technology but offers the same services. So these are the carrier types. The different types of cell carriers are GSM carriers and CDMA carriers and the prepaid carriers. 
So GSM carriers or global system for mobile communication, these cell companies use GSM networks and their phones identify with the carrier network through the use of a SIM card. This makes it easy for users to swap GSM phones and retain their phone numbers and account information. CDMA carriers, called Division Multiple Access. These cell companies use CDMA networks and CDMA phones used as ESN, Electronic Serial Number, to identify with the carrier network. If a user wants to change to another CDMA phone, he or she must contact the carrier and perform an ESN change. Prepaid carriers. These are carriers that charge an upfront fee for services and are run by uh, a CDMA or GSM carrier. Prepaid carriers um, also uh, uh, by a third-party carrier whose services of a major carrier network. Like TrackPhone is a well-known prepaid carrier. Popular prepaid carriers in the U.S. include Cricket, Virgin Mobile, and Straight Talk Wireless. Prepaid services. Prepaid carriers provide a cellular service on a month-to-month -month basis and do not require users to sign a contract that obligates them to continue to pay for service for a certain number of months. So at the bottom, you can see the companies that are offering a prepaid services. So in the Philippines, we have the Smart, Sun Cellular, and Globe. Network coverage. One of the factors you might take into consideration when trying to decide which carrier to use is network coverage. Different carriers have different coverage areas, depending on how and where they have built their cell tower infrastructure. Coverage area is important for service. That is, you can get service on your cell network if there are none of your carrier's cell towers in the area. Now, cell carriers make arrangement with each other so that when you wander outside of your carrier's cell coverage area, you can obtain service on another carrier's network. However, you will have to pay a special fee called a roaming charge whenever this happens. So how cellular service differs from internet service? Internet service comes to your home or school or office, and that is where it stays. You may connect it from different areas of your house or office or campus but the service comes to your premises at one location. And you must be in the premises to use it. For all intents and purposes, internet service is stationary. Cellular service, by its very design, travels with you and is available anywhere your provider has a cell network. When you wander outside of your carrier's cell coverage area, your phone can roam and use services from another carrier. Cellular service is truly mobile. Obtaining cell service. When you want to purchase cell service, you are faced with a dizzying number of options. Do you want to sign a contract or go month to month? What type of service plan do you need? Will you use add-on services? Contract services. Large cell providers usually provide coverage on a contract basis and require you to honor the contract. This is to continue paying for your service for a specific length time, usually 24 months. Contracts are per line of service. That is, if you want service for two phones, one for you and one for your significant other, you must purchase two lines of service and therefore sign two contracts, one for each line. When you open a new line of service, you often have to pay an activation fee. Cellular service plans. Cellular service provides three elements in their pricing points, depending on which plan you choose. Generally, these are referred to as talk, text, and data. Talk refers to sending and receiving voice calls. Some plans allot a certain number of free talk minutes per month, and then charge a specific amount per minute for every minute that exceeds the allotted number of minutes. Text refers to the sending and receiving of text messages or SMS and picture and video messages or MMS. Some plans allow for a certain number of text messages per month 
and a charge a fee for each text messages that exceeds the allotment. Data refers to information that you upload and download to and from the internet. This includes application updates, notifications, GPS information, as well as email. Uploading or downloading large files, streaming audio and streaming video. Some carriers also offer plans that allow for unlimited data use. So here is an example of a cellular service plan in the USA um, from Sprint, T-Mobile, and AT&T. So as you can see, Sprint has the most budgeted or cheapest um, plan that they can offer for two lines for only 100 a month. And it has unlimited data usage and unlimited talk and text. While um, AT&T has the highest um, fees for 140 for two lines. While Verizon are not offering uh, a two-line service but most of them are uh, for offering unlimited data usage and unlimited talk and text. Cellular devices. Cellular devices connect to your carrier cellular network. Each device must be recognized by the carrier network either through a SIM card or, a, or an ESN number programmed into the device. Devices included are smartphones, basic cell phones, and cellular-enabled tablets. For smartphones, um, we use them for doing work. We use them for communication. We use them to carry our insurance cards or address books or phone books. We use them for entertainment. We use them for social activities like taking pictures and videos. While the basic cell phones um, think of the old model flip phone it is designed primarily for making and receiving voice calls the call quality is sometimes better than what you can find on a smartphone the basic phone is also less expensive more durable and they can survive quite a few falls without becoming unusable or cracking a screen and a single charge can last from three days to a week the cellular enabled tablets um, a cellular-enabled tablet looks and feels like a standard tablet, and it can even connect to a Wi-Fi just like a regular tablet. But it has the extra capability of connecting to your carrier cellular network. A cellular-enabled tablet includes a SIM card or is programmed with an ESN so that it can connect to the carrier network. To use a cellular-enabled tablet, you must purchase a separate line of service for the tablet and a data plan. So I have personally owned a cellular-enabled tablet, and it is very helpful because I can go online anywhere without having to find a Wi-Fi or hotspot or Wi-Fi area. But I have to pay an extra for extra service for this because I need another SIM card for the cellular tablet um, works. So when a smartphone, cell phone, or cellular-enabled tablet access the internet using the cell carrier's network, all data that is uploaded and downloaded is referred to as a mobile data. Hardwired phones. A hardwired phone or a landline phone is connected to a telephone jack in the wall using a standard telephone line or a copper wiring. The telephone jack is connected to a local telephone switch which is connected to the rest of the telephone network. The phone may be fixed or cordless. A cordless phone is different than a mobile phone. A cordless phone handset sends and receives wireless signals from the cordless phone base station. But the base station itself is connected by a wire to a telephone jack. For a sent monthly service, you can call anyone in your calling area without additional charge. Calls outside your local calling area are considered long distance and usually incur an extra charge based on the duration of the call. So what are the advantages and disadvantages? Landline phones require voltage for ringing and dialing, and this power is delivered from the telephone network through the phone line itself. For this reason, you can use a landline phone to place a call even during a power outage. VoIP phones 
which use the internet, are dependent upon routers and modems, which all require AC power. You cannot use a VoIP phone during a power outage. Another advantage of landline service is that the service is extremely reliable and provides excellent sound quality. In fact, landlines are so reliable, residential and business alarm systems are tied into a landline and place a call to the alarm company or to emergency services when a break-in is detected. An obvious limitation of a landline phone is that the service is not portable. The phone must be connected to the telephone jack. Voicemail A voicemail system is a centralized system used in businesses for sending, storing, and retrieving audio messages. Residential and cell phone service plans also often include a voicemail capabilities. In a business phone system, each extension is usually linked to a voicemail box. When a party calls a number and the line is not answered or is busy, the call is sent over to the voicemail box. The caller will hear a greeting message previously recorded by the user. This message can give instruction to the caller to leave a voice message or may provide other options such as paging the user or being transferred to another extension or to a receptionist. Voicemail system also provide notifications to the user to alert them when they have received new voicemail messages. Most systems provide multiple ways for users to check their voicemail, including accessing the voicemail box through a PC or from an online phone or even a mobile phone. Configuring your voicemail Voicemail systems guide you through a menu of options and choices. Listen to the voice prompts and follow the instruction. At various points, you will be asked to record information, after which you are usually given the option to keep your recording or to discard and record again. You indicate your choice by pressing a specific key on the dial pad. For example, you might be instructed to press 1 to keep your recording or 2 to discard it and record again. The first time you configure your voicemail, you may be prompted to state your name slowly and clearly and to create and confirm a PIN code that you will use later to access your messages and configure your greeting messages. Follow the voice prompts to record a general greeting and any supplemental greetings, such as an out-of-office message. The voicemail configuration program will guide you through setting up greeting messages and turning specific ones on or off. Personal or business. A voicemail greeting for a personal phone number can be less formal than one that you use for a business number. However, if you use your mobile phone for both business and personal calls, you should ensure that your greeting is suitable for both type of callers. Retrieving messages. Your mobile phone will display an icon when you have new, unheard voice messages waiting for you. You must call the voicemail system and log in, enter your password, to access your mailbox. You can play your unheard messages, discard them, or archive them. You can also record greetings and configure pager settings from within the voicemail system. Mailbox full. If you receive a high quantity of voicemail messages and do not clear out your voicemail box, the mailbox will become full and callers will not be able to leave new messages. The mailbox will remain full until you listen to and clear out the existing messages. Additionally, plan to include the following items in your voicemail message. Identify yourself by first and last name, and if appropriate, state the name of your company. State the number or numbers at which you can be reached, and if appropriate, during which time frames. You might also provide your email address if you are willing to accept a response via email. Mention the date and time you are calling, Briefly describe the nature and purpose of your call. Ask the person to call you back at their earliest convenience or in whatever time frame is required. Repeat the number at which you can be reached. Thank them for their time. And it is not difficult to leave a clear, concise message and it is usually greatly appreciated. So this ends our topic about network and mobile devices. So again, I'm Maria Joella Cruz, together with my um, groupmate Kelsey Devera. We thank you guys for your listening.